Hello students. Today we're going to talk about earthquakes, the magnitude, and triangulation. So what is the magnitude? Well, magnitude refers to how much energy was released during an earthquake. When we use the scale called a Richter scale, every level is 10 times stronger. The Richter scale is the level we use until about 30, 40 years ago. We use a different scale now, but sometimes you'll hear in the news it's still popular that the Richter scale is used. What's interesting about this magnitude, how strong the earthquake is, how much energy, is notice that when it comes to like the small earthquakes, one or two or three, they can happen every minute, every hour, every day. Small earthquakes are always happening, and that's why we know that our Earth is always changing, always moving. It just happens most of the time very small. But once in a while, we get really big earthquakes. And here's what happened. The scale that we use now is the modified Mer Mercalli scale. Um, it's different from the Richter scale, but like I said, we sometimes still use the Richter scale. And usually, when it comes to the modified Mercalli scale, Anywhere from like 1 to 4 is not very strong. Maybe you felt it and you're like, what was that? Was that an earthquake? But usually you start feeling it up to 3s. From 3 up, you start feeling it. And of course, um, using the modified Mercalli scale, every time you go up 1, it's 33 times. In the Richter scale, every time you go up 1 number, it's 10 times. Well, how do we know? How do we know how strong an earthquake is? How do we know the magnitude? We use these machines called seismographs. Here's a picture of one here. But basically, seismographs measure the magnitude of earthquakes using the Richter or Mercalli scale. This little needle here has like a little pencil. And if it moves, like it moves right here, there's an earthquake happening. When it moves a lot, there's a strong earthquake. When it moves a little, it's a little earthquake. And you can tell that it's starting a new line right here, <clears throat> and then it moves on to another side, another side. It's basically like one big roll sheet of paper with a very, very sensitive pencil. And the more the, or the stronger the earthquake, the stronger the magnitude, then the more the pencil moves and the stronger the earthquake was recorded. Seismograph. Epicenter and focus. The epicenter and the focus refer to two different things that are very interrelated. First of all, let's talk about the focus. Here, we see that an earthquake happened. This right here would be called what? If you said fault, that's correct. This line here is the fault line. And look, you can tell that this was connected up here. You see the power line here, this probably was here. This brown area means that this piece of land slid downward. What type of fault is this? When the land is pushed, uh, pulled away this way and then pulled away that way, and one of them falls down. Is it strike slip? Is it normal or is it reverse? You should have said this is a normal fault. When this big piece broke and was pulled this way and fell downward, an earthquake happened. If you measure on top, like this people in this house right here, the epicenter, it just means where the earthquake happened above ground. So in this, you see the street right here? This, if you were standing in this spot, the earthquake would have felt the strongest because it's right underneath the focus. If you would have been standing here, it would have felt strong still, but not as strong as here, because that's not the epicenter, which is underneath the focus. The epicenter is the exact spot above ground where you feel it. The focus is where the earthquake starts deep inside the earth. So, let's look at an earthquake that's here in this country of China. So if you were living in this city here, you would feel it the strongest because you're at the epicenter. But if you were living a little farther away, you are farther away from the epicenter, then the earthquakes feels weaker and weaker. If you keep going, since this is China, Japan's over here, and then the United uh, California's all the way over here, you would feel it less and less and less, or not feel it at all, depending on how strong the earthquake was. Now how do you find the epicenter? To find the epicenter of an earthquake, usually you subtract the primary wave speed. So let's say an earthquake happens now. Then you are going to feel another wave. And that second wave you feel is called a secondary wave. You subtract the primary wave speed from the secondary wave speed. Let's say the primary wave hit now. Then you subtract it, it hits two seconds later, which means that the earthquake was really close by. But where exactly? You make a circle. If, let's say your radius is two, then you make your circle. 
and then other seismograph stations would also make circles and then wherever the in three circles intersect so here's the first circle here's a seismograph station in Salt Lake City here's a seismograph station in Portland and here's one in Los Angeles when they make their three circles wherever the, all three circles meet which is right here that's the epicenter so remember to find the epicenter you use triangulation you just subtract the primary wave speed from the secondary wave speed that is the end of this video. Have a great day.